Okay, so we're here now in uh, BTEC First ICT, and Jamie Russell White uh, is about to give us a presentation on online security uh, to a technical audience. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you. Um, online safety and security. Viruses, spyware, and other threats. Now, viruses are basically pieces of code that are maliciously inserted into websites. That are inserted into websites by by malicious people. They are basically malicious pieces of code that, obviously, as as the term malicious suggests. Activate malicious payloads. Now, yeah. Um, um, what? Now, um, spyware, on the other hand, is basically software that goes into a person's computer and basically tracks their online activity, well, tracks their like the activities they do on the computer, like whether they go online or whether they play games or something like that. It's different to a keylogger, which I'll explain about later. But it is still a harmful program that mm. you can get into your computer. Um, some, uh, some software, actually, some freeware, they bundle spyware in with their products. And some websites actually can give you what's called tracking cookies, which aren't which aren't spyware, but they do track they do still track your user activities on that side. So um now um keyloggers well keyloggers if you've heard that term for the first time you'll think what what the, what the hell is a keylogger? What what is what are they? Well keyloggers are um, well, let me start by telling you that keyloggers can occur in two forms. They can occur as pieces of software that you get on a computer, or they can occur in hardware form. And what keyloggers basically are, are, um, are pieces of software or hardware connected to a computer that record the keystrokes of the user that basically record the keystrokes that the user makes. They they can also record mouse clicks as well. Um, now, uh, as I said, they can occur in two forms. Now, software keyloggers are are um, not easy are not easy to remove. Some most antivirus most antivirus programs can't spot software keyloggers, but you do, although you do have to have a specialist antivirus program to get rid of them, they, they can't be removed. What they basically do is um, they, they, they hide themselves in, in a system, then they record the keystrokes of a user, so that they, they either keep it on an inner file on their program, or they send it off to somewhere else. Um, now, software keyloggers aren't easy to remove. Hardware keyloggers, on the other hand, are are um, devices. Now, 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 these devices are normally on. They these normally occur on wires um, attached to wires on a computer. Now you may, now you may think that that's you may think that um, a simple device connected to a wire is not a bad thing. Not necessarily so, I'm afraid. Most devices connected to wires are not bad, but there are a few, such as hardware keyloggers, that are. What hardware keyloggers do is basically what the same as a keylogger does. It records the keystrokes of a user and the mouse clicks that they make just in a heart just they exist in a hardware form which is actually a physical device that's connected to a wire now they are very easy to remove what you basically do is you disconnect the device from the wire 
and you basically bin it to, to stop it from working again. If it has installed any software onto your computer, please make sure that you remove that as well, as that could be part of the keylogger. And you don't and you don't want file and you don't want files from the keylogger or spyware or spyware or viruses remaining on your computer, do you? And unless you want unless you want to get further infections and then yes, yeah, so unless you want to get further infections and your computer will run into much more trouble than um, if you removed virus files earlier on. Okay. Um, now, now another kind of threat that you get online is a Trojan horse. Now, Trojan horses came. Now, Trojan horses came from the story of the Trojan horse. What these are are particularly nasty programs that go into a person's computer and can can really damage a person's computer system. For example, do not download a game called Flipwords from a site called www.gamehouse.com or you will get what's called a backdoor Trojan horse, which is a particularly nasty type of Trojan horse. Trojan horses themselves occur in two forms. Front door Trojan horses, which which are still which are nasty, and backdoor Trojan horses, which are even worse. They can do even more damage to a person's computer system than front door Trojan horses can. And there are also threats called Trojans. Now these are basically um, virus. Well, these are basically files or pieces of code. Or, or other viruses that are disguised as things you would want to download. Or that come bundled, yeah, or that come bundled with things you want to download. For example, you could download a graphics file or a music file and think it completely safe until you scan it with a virus program and find it is infected. Or you could download it not knowing the threats, not scanning it with a virus not scanning it with a virus checker, and oops, before you know it, you've before you know it, that music file has turned into a dangerously harmful virus. So could I ask a question? Yes. You can. Um, what do Trojan horses normally do on your system? Um Trojan horses will normally, they will normally sort of infect your system and basically plant themselves in it so that you can't get rid of them. Mm. And that you, you, you only need, you need basically specialist antivirus software to remove. They're a bit, they're a bit like software keyloggers really in that they're... Because uh, I, I, I heard that uh, Trojan horses can often um, disable your firewall to allow um, hackers to gain access to your computer si system externally, is that true? Yes, that, that's, that's very true and that's one of the things I was actually going to say in the presentation. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, now Trojan horses, as you've rightly said, can and often do disable firewalls and other antivirus programs that, you've, that you, you may have running on your computer so as to allow other viruses in so as to download other viruses or so as to allow hackers in from outside from the internet to hack into your computer and give you a really high phone bill in some cases i.e. Um, one example was when I was younger, um, we had, uh, me, me and my mum had a dial up modem, no, uh, yeah, Zyvel dial up, and it actually got hacked into. 
Now, now what the hackers did was they also they also hijacked our phone lines. So they were, for example, dialing 0900 numbers that we hadn't dialed. Um, then we bet my mum basically got a bill of about. I can't remember if it's one hundred pounds or nine hundred pounds, but it's something. It was a very high bill, and my mum was really cross. And since then, she's never got a dial-up modem ever again. She's always she's only ever got broadband since, which is much safer, and it runs at a much higher speed anyway. Okay. So, um, uh, one thing I haven't done so much on, but I, but that I, 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 I know a bit about, uh, is another type of virus called a worm. Now, this is a program that, as the name suggests, worms its way into a person's computer so that it cannot be easily removed. Um, and it, it can it can embed it it can literally embed itself in the system so deeply that it can't be removed even by even by the user. It it has to be removed by going into a safe mode or by taking your computer into a repair shop that into a repair shop. That's how badly that's how bad it can often get. Now the next slide. Slide three. Facebook, um, Twitter, and social Facebook, media. Facebook, Twitter, Facebook. and social media. Face slide three. Um, slide Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. Um, now Facebook is, uh, as we all know, is a site bustling with online activity. But in the midst of all this online activity, there are safety precautions that you have to bear in mind. And as Facebook is a site that literally anyone can join, you literally do not know who's out there at, where, at the right. You, you don't know who's out there at what time or whatever time. So, one minute, you could get some, you could talk to someone who seems nice, but, but who's, who's really provided. Or... You could talk to someone who's really nice and who is genuinely nice. You just don't know who's out there. Now, about now, um, this is on the topic of Facebook. Now, um, do not accept friend requests from people on Facebook of whom you've never met personally of, or whom you don't know. Particularly, particularly if they're from foreign countries. Um, I understand, yeah, yes, it is very tempting to accept people from foreign countries, yes, I know, people can, people want to contact um, foreigners who they don't know and they want to get to know them, but still, please don't. Again, you just don't know who's out there, you don't know if that person's a scammer, or um, a spammer, or someone who wants to hack your account, or whether they're, or whether they're just after your details, you simply don't know. Blank. Forward links from applications, um, events with suspicious um, names. Do not click on links from applications you find suspicious. For example, um, an application like oh, let let me think. Let let's just let's just say so let's just um use a random example. Let's just, let's say that there's an application on Facebook called. Um, called I'm your new Facebook friend. Now I, <laughs> I know I know it's a random example, <coughs> but we're just using it for the purposes of this. Now, say it it sent links to your friends to say, um, hi, uh, I'm to say hi. Um, I'm your new Facebook friend, would you want to connect with me? And then it will give you a link. Now, immediately, you think, hang on, there's something wrong here. Or, if you were more gullible than, than me, or, or probably some security professionals, you wouldn't think like that. You'd think, oh, it's a, oh, it's a great new way to make new friends. I, I, I think I'll go on that, I'll have a look at that, I'll check it out. And actually, 
in the end, you always find that it will do un untold things to your Facebook profile. It will even damage it in some cases. That's why you should never trust applications with names that you think are suspicious or that sound suspicious. You can also get spam and hackers and scammers and stuff like that in as well into your account as well, and they are not good. May I ask a question? Yes, Ben. Well, on Facebook, yeah. obviously you've got the advantages and disadvantages, but um, is there any like different things that are advantage to Facebook site, like, sites like Facebook? Um, well, the only, the only the only advantage I could really say, Ben, was that you could that maybe you you could talk to anyone at any time, providing they run providing they're online. Mm. So it does have advantages as well as disadvantages, as you put, isn't it, Ben? Yeah. Yeah. So there it is. Um. Don't now. Um. We now we all know that Facebook events can be can be promising, don't we? That they can mm -hmm. they can have names um, about products, or they can be Christmases, Christmas parties, or birthday parties, or anything. Now we we find we sometimes find that we'd want to go to one of those events, but unfortunately, in the midst of all this event activity, there are events with suspicious sounding names that you must be very careful of. For example, do not attend an event with names such as win an iPhone 4 for free or get iPhone 5 or or even um, or even free voucher from Starbucks for fifty dollars for free. Now, what, what, though, why you mustn't attend those events is because if you do, you will often get, um, you, 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 you will, you will often get the promised um, thing or the promised goods being that the event claim were being delivered to you on a particular day at a particular time, never turning up. Now, that's exactly what happened to me, but my case was a bit worse than just never turning up. My case was, actually, I attended this event called Win an iPhone 4 for free, because I, I was wondering, oh, um, Win an iPhone 4 for free, wow, that's amazing, I'd love that opportunity. And the event said, uh, yeah, you, could, you can win it for free, all you have to do is just fill in these steps, to, to follow these steps. And I thought, oh, God, this is an amazing opportunity. I'll, I'll check it out. I'll look into it further. How wrong I was to be proved. Because the moment I attended the event, I knew something was wrong. I, d I didn't know what it was, but I just knew something was wrong. Jim? Yes. May I ask another question? Please? Yes. Um... I don't think for um, the event, are they really called events? Um, they, they, they are, or, or they, they seem to be, as far as, I, as, as far as I was on Facebook, yeah, when I was on it, they were called events. Mm -hmm. And I think, I, think, I think they are still called events now, okay. actually, but, but I don't, yeah. Um, so, what can happen is... Again, as I learnt, this is why I never go on to any events with suspicious names ever again, by the way. Um, as I learnt, you shouldn't do that because the promised iPhone 4 that I was going to get, or iPhone 3, or, no, iPhone 4 it was, that I was going to get, I was going to get it on a particular day which just happened to be... Uh, it just happened to be a Monday at such and such a time. Now, you'd think, oh, that's an amazing opportunity. They'll just deliver it to my house and they'll be all over with. No, it's not like that. 
what happened with me, and I'm sure it happened with a load of other people as well, was that the iPhone never turned up. And I was thinking, well... I think we get the idea yes, there, Jenny. Yeah. Thanks, <laughs> thanks for that. It's an interesting anecdote, but yeah. perhaps um, because we're under a bit of a time restraint, yes. you could go on to the next point, if that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. Thanks. Okay, so don't attend events with suspicious names. Okay, now, um, um, now, um, another pointer, which is what I was briefly touching on in that last point about events with, with suspiciously sounding names, is links claiming to offer vouchers or other such material for free. Now, now, don't click on any of those links. Now, I, I know I know it sounds tempting to just click on a link, say, um, £50 voucher from Starbucks for free. Yeah, well, we get the idea on that one because it's similar to the last point. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So let's go on to the next point. Okay, the next point is... Um, the next point is... Um, personal information such as address. Now... Now we all know we all like to put our all our info on Facebook for for the whole world to see, yeah. or for our friends to see, don't we? Mm -hmm. but, some of us do. <laughs> yeah, some of us do. But there there is certain info that you should only that you that you should really never put on Facebook, or if you do, you should make it so that only your friends or friends of your friends can see it. Even if you put it as so, so that friends of your friends can see it, you still got to be careful. Mm. Um, now, one of the main personal information topic things you must never put on there, or you must put on there so that friends can see, is your address. Yeah. Which to, is which basically tells people where where you physically live. So, assuming you assuming you've created a Facebook profile and you thought. Oh, well, just, oh, well, I don't care about privacy. I, w I want the whole world to know everything about me. And, mm. you, and you went click, 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 and you just put your address in there without thinking. Yeah. Someone, somewhere, could fl could go to that country, <laughs> and what they could then do was they could visit, you, they could visit your house. You, you, you don't know who they are. You don't know where they come from, what sort of person they are, whether they're a, 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 a criminal or a drug dealer or a, a murderer or yeah. a pervert or anyone. You simply don't know who they are. That's why you must never put your address on Facebook. Now, um... Another point, another interesting point is about your Facebook password. Yeah. Um, what I was going to say, and what I will say, is never give out your Facebook password to anybody you don't know. You literally, you don't, you, 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 you don't, you don't have the foggiest idea of what that person could do with that password, unless, of course, you met them personally. Jerry, yeah, is there anything, um that they could do that's illegal if they um, find out too many of your personal details, um, these, these criminals? Yes, yes. What they could do is they could, is they could set up a Facebook profile claiming to be you. They could impersonate you right. online. Yeah. And then... Um, because I heard that, um, I heard about this, this uh, idea of identity theft. Yes. Can you tell us a bit more about identity theft? Yeah, identity theft is basically when someone, when someone basically steals your identity. Mm. That's all it is. They, well, they say that's all it is, but what can they do then that what, would be quite, um, you know, quite yeah. bad, would be bad news for you? Yeah, what yeah. What could they do? Yeah, they can, when they've got your identity, they can pretend to be you, so they can, they can, for example, I heard about a case where in, I think, I'm not 
quite sure where it was, but I heard about this case where this man called um, Derek Derek Swade, I think his name was. Mm -hmm. He want he impersonated someone else to become a teacher at this school. And yeah, I mean, I get the idea there, but they can even open bank accounts in your name, I they believe, can, can't they? Yeah. And um, uh, run up credit card bills run up in your name. Credit card bills. Yeah. Um, um, even buy stuff that you haven't bought in your name. For example, my mum received a bank statement once where it said, "Oh, you've spent uh, such and such amount of money in TJ Hughes," and it turned out to be about three thousand pounds or something like that. And my mum thought, "I've, I've never spent three thousand pounds." Wow. Something like that. Yeah. And, and I thought. What if I, what if I, I've not been in TJ Hughes at that time when the bank statement came out. I've never bought, I had never bought anything from there on that day. I'd be, I've been somewhere else. Oh yes, I get the idea, Jeremy. You now we're going to have to um, speed things up a little bit. We're just going to finish this slide and, and perhaps record, record your um, presentation in two parts, okay? So just for the next just two or three minutes, tell us a little bit about, um, looking at your slide here, tell us a little bit about friend requests on MSN and um, Twitter, okay? Yeah. Um... Now, on MSN, again, MSN is a bit like Facebook, you've got oh, oh, millions and millions of users on there, you've got millions of personalities, you've got people who just want to get to know other people. Unfortunately, in all this activity, there are bots or, or other similar things of similar natures that can basically add you and you you don't know who the hell they are now well there are people who add you and you don't know who they are that is yeah so similar yeah, to the facebook idea facebook, yeah. okay thank you about twitter um again twitter is a social networking set where you can basically tell the world what you're doing at whatever time mm -hmm. um unfortunately there are spammers on Twitter, just like on, just like on every other social networking site. Yeah. Um, that what they will do is they will follow you as soon as they get a tweet from someone's name that they they like the look of. So that's why you must always keep your tweets private. Okay. Now, um, for the. Say you're using Twitter from a mobile, which I, I, I happen to be doing, um, following, no, um, setting your tweets to private would be, even though it's a, a, safe, a good safety precaution, it would be a bit impractical because what, what, you, what happens is um, you go to, say someone requests to follow you and it emails you saying, don't do that, the dirt is requested to follow you on Twitter. So you go, okay, I'll look at that and I'll approve or deny it. It then has a link saying approve or deny request. You click it. It, it, it does all the necessary things it needs to do. But then it vanishes off the, off the mobile site and it asks you to sign in or, 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 or whatever it does. It will, in some cases, and particularly in my case, it asks me to sign in, so I did. Um, well, no, I didn't actually because I'd, I'd already had an account on there and I actually thought that that was the mobile site. Hmm. It, then there was a link at the bottom of the page saying, already using Twitter via SMS? And because I was, I clicked it. It then asked me to fill in the mobile number that I was using with Twitter, so I did. Unfortunately, it wouldn't accept it. It didn't even give an error message. You're right, so you've had a... A few bugs then on your experience of using Twitter. Yeah, that yeah. uh, messed you up a little bit. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you. We're going to have to make that part one of your presentation for now, Jeremy, okay. because of time restraints. But uh, and, and thanks to Ben also for um, asking some interesting questions there as well. But just before we round up, does anybody else in this group of technical experts want to ask Jamie a question about his presentation? Uh, 
Okay, so, yeah, it was quite informative that, Jamie, and thank, thank you, you for all the research. You've done a lot of research there. Um, might need to talk to you a little bit about um, the, some of the accuracy of the information you gave yeah, on yeah. key loggers um, and also on Trojans, but we can, you know, we can have a little chat about that. Um, have you mentioned fishing in your presentation? Um, I haven't mentioned. No, okay, so that yeah. might be something that we could think about as well. Um, oh, um, now you got to be careful of your. Another little tip is be careful of your body language with yes. the rocking. Yes, okay, yes. so you want to try and. Uh, Something that we're concentrating on anyway, really, isn't it? Trying yes. to reduce that. Um, and the only other thing I've made a quick note of here as, as I was listening to your presentation is be careful about some of the language that you use, you know, because um, I know you, you might use it in a conversational way. You might say words such as hell, God, pervert. But in a formal presentation, some people might not feel that they're appropriate, you yeah. know? You know, so you've got to be careful with, with some kinds of uh, wording or language that you might use in a formal situation, such as a presentation to an audience. But um, it's very informative, um, thank and thank you very much, Jamie. Uh, we might have to condense it slightly. It's a little bit on the long side. But um, still a good presentation as a first, a first presentation. Okay, thanks, Jamie. Okay, so this is Jamie's presentation to um, a non-technical audience, Jamie. Yeah. No, no, it's, no it's, um, it's someone to a technical, technical audience. audience. That's fine. Part two. Yeah. Start. So, so the slide four is uploading called content uploading to content to the site and the site. Now, now when, you, when you upload digital content to hosting sites, the site you need to you need to bear the same precautions in mind as you would when you upload a content to sites like Facebook and Twitter, which you can actually do. You can upload photos and videos on, on, on those sites. Mm -hmm. What you need to be aware of, though, is that there are, uh, there, there are, how can I say it, rules that you need to follow, just like on YouTube when it comes to uploading content. Yeah. I.e. photos and videos. Um, um, here are some, also I will be talking about some other precautions that you need to bear in mind. So... Would you like me to read out your slide? Um, yeah, that would be, be good, yeah. Okay, uploading digital content, uploading material that you would not want the whole world to see. Yeah, so... One precaution that you must bear in mind is that if you don't want the if you don't want the whole world basically to see a video on a site like YouTube or Daily Motion or Meta Cafe or, or basically any other video sharing site out there, then don't upload it. Or if you do upload it, make sure that if it's on YouTube or any other video sharing site that you upload the video, that you've got it set to either unlisted so that only people with the link can view it, or private so that no one except you can view it. Okay. Or if it's on Facebook, set it so that only your friends or only you can see it, depending on your desired privacy setting that you want to put in place. Okay. Um, finished, yeah? Yeah. Next point, um, uploading content that you don't own yourself. Okay. Now, this is more about a rule rather than a precaution. If you, basically, if you upload content that you don't own yourself, that is called a breach of copyright. If you do it on a site like YouTube multiple times, you may get your account suspended or or banned 
depending on what the YouTube staff want to do. Um, you may also get a DMCA, Digital, Digital Millennium Copyrights Act, claim filed against you for uploading the content. Okay. Um, and what that also does is, if you breach copyright, that will cost copyright holders, because then they won't get paid the royalties for making the music or, or the pictures or even or even the videos that you upload without their permission. So royalties won't go to them, so they won't get any money. So the artists or photographers or video directors or music video directors or anything won't be able to get any more money to support themselves. Okay, thanks Jamie. Uploading pornography or other such content? Um, yes, now this is an interesting one. If you upload... Now, there are rules on sites like YouTube that you mustn't upload something called pornography. Um, if, if you upload that onto a site like YouTube, you could get your account blocked or suspended if you get reported or blocked by someone else. If your video gets reported, that, that, um, if your pornographic video gets reported, that will have the same effect as being <coughs> reported, as your channel being reported or blocked. So that eventually the YouTube staff will get onto it, if they ever do, not saying that they will, and your video may be taken down, and your account may even be banned if you do it multiple times. Okay. If you want to upload pornography, do not use YouTube. Instead, use a site called Xtube. Mm, there may also be uh, moral issues about that. Yes, there may. Yes, for example. That we need to consider, Jamie, yeah. as to whether it's the right thing to do in the first place. Yes, yeah? yes, yes. Okay. Now, in next point, three strikes and you're out. Okay. Um, this applies to any... Um, this applies to mainly video sharing sites. Um, now, when you upload a video, like a pornographic video, or you upload copyrighted content that you, you don't own yourself, or you do any other such thing of that nature, or possibly of another, or possibly of another mm, nature, depending keep it on your sure, Keep it brief, yeah. You, the video sharing site in question... Will you will mostly well most video sharing sites actually use a system called free strikes and you're out. What this basically means is that if you do something like either upload a video or post an offensive comment on someone's video that they don't like or things like that, you will get one strike on your account there. If you do that again you will get two strikes. If you do that again, you will get three strikes, and then you will be what they call out. Okay. You will be banned from the site or blocked from using it, depending okay. on the offence. Just a tip, remember what, body, what we said about body language. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. And next so, point, private precautions. Yep. Um, when, if you do, again, this, this comes back to the point of Uploading content that you don't want the whole world to see, really. If you... You must upload very personal content in a private setting. So, don't... I'm not... Do not upload any very personal content. Although, if you happen to do so, set it to private, is my suggestion. So that basically only you can view the content. Okay, and anonymous? Um, now, th now, this is an interesting one, because this relates to the child... Oh, this... Um, uh, I'm trying to think of what I put there. Okay, let's move on to the next slide then, because uh, we don't want it to be too long. Okay. We can come back to that on our second go. All right. Slide 5, Workspace, Respect Online. Level. This slide is called Respect 
online. Now, if I could just read, the th there's only three points on that. I'll read them out quickly so you can do the whole thing, yeah? Yeah. Respect online, troll, and debates can get heated. Okay. Respect online. Now, there are... Um, there are safety there are safety regulations and rules again that you must bear in mind when using when using almost every almost every publicly uploadable content uh, almost every publicly uploadable website that you use these if it's a video sharing site, they, these relate to videos. If it's a site like Facebook or Twitter, these can also relate to videos or your activity on the site to do with how you conduct yourself. Now, um, now, do you know what a troll is? No, tell us, Jamie. Well, a troll is basically the term for someone who deliberately goes on a website and posts comments, photos, videos, whatever, that are designed to deliberately cause outrage among their audiences mm. or among someone else's audiences if it's a friend mm, or right. someone they're posting it to. If you are a troll and if you are, if you are quote, caught by the website, if you do this, basically, you will get found out and you will probably have your account blocked or banned if you are reported enough times. Okay. That um, is to say, if you are reported at all. Debates get heated? Um, now, what, the final thing on this slide. Um, debates, online debates. Yes, it is good to have a debate online, isn't it? We, we all mm -hmm. know that it's good to... Um, rant about political issues and things like that. But you mustn't let it get so heated that someone reports you or blocks you for it. And if you are found by the site or by the person who then reports you to the site to be flouting any of the site's regulations while you are making the debate get heated, again, your account will get blocked banned or suspended or terminated depending on what site it is. Okay, thanks Jamie. Next slide. Okay. Slide firewalls. I'll space. read it for Firewall. you. Uh, firewalls scan all incoming and outcoming traffic. Outgoing traffic, rather. Let's talk about that first. Yep. Um, firewalls are basically programs that scan all incoming and outgoing traffic on the computer on your computer and um, and protect it and protect it from what? Protect it from well main well mainly well they can protect it from viruses but they, they also protect it from Trojan horses and hackers and things like that. It is mainly hackers. Yeah, yeah. it is mainly hackers. They stop hackers from getting into your computer. That's what they, they mainly do. Um now, they scan all incoming and outgoing traffic to make sure that it's safe and to make sure that someone who shouldn't be getting into your computer isn't getting into your computer and therefore getting access to your information without your knowledge or permission. Okay, your next point is computer activity could be suspicious. Now, um, when a firewall scans all incoming and outgoing traffic that's safe, it will ignore it because unless you mark it as an exception, there will be there will be no danger to your computer. It will not tell you anything. But when computer activity that is possibly suspicious is detected, the firewall will prompt you with with a series of with a dialogue box that will come up saying um, something along the lines of alert, Windows Firewall has blocked this program because dot 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 dot, what, whatever the reason is. I see. And common programs. Um, okay, common programs that are blocked by firewalls are 
are IAM clients such as Windows Live Messenger, possibly Yahoo Messenger or AOL. I haven't actually tried those, so I don't know if it blocks them or not. But I have tried Windows Live Messenger and that has been blocked. I've also known my Windows firewall, my computer anyway, I don't know if it's the same about yours or anyone else's, but I know it's like this with mine, that Skype can also get, well, Skype can also basically prompt an alert. What? Because I am clients are, or can be, a source of viruses or malicious programs or infectious code. And is it possible to override that on your own firewall so that it does allow access to the firewall? Um, yes, it, it is possible. Yes, it is, that's right. It is. Okay, next yeah. slide. Okay, now slide on to slide, slide seven. seven. Encryption. 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 Uh, encryption and decryption. Okay. Do, okay. You may think you know, you may think you know what encryption is. But do you really? Well, if not, I will I think tell I you. do, yeah. You tell me anyway. Okay. Encryption is the practice of scrambling data, basically, into a form that is not readable by humans. Basically making it so that so that you so that any unauthorized person or any person you don't want to view the data can't view the data that you've got encrypted. So it puts it into code, yeah? Yes, it puts it into computer code, which can only be read by a computer. It cannot be read by a normal person or or a human being or a bot. And how would they decrypt it so it's back to normal? Now, what they would do is when they want to decrypt it, they would try and, uh, they, they would have a program on the computer which would, well, sometimes they would have a program on the computer which would enable you to, which would enable you to open it, but open the data but not necessarily view it. You... No, normally, encrypted data is protected with a password or some sort mm. of PIN, yeah. which you would have to enter for the data to be decrypted and put into a human reading So it keeps, so it would keep your data pretty secure, I would imagine, yes, wouldn't it, it would, Jamie? Yes, it, it, it would keep your data. Okay, secure. next slide. Okay, slide eight works. Data, data protection, protection regulations. regulations. Level what do they state? And yeah. Yeah. So, one other thing I must talk about is the data protection regulations. Now, the data protec protection sorry, regulations state that companies can only hold a certain amount of information about you and that they cannot hold any information about you without your knowledge without your knowledge or in some cases prior written consent hmm. if you're a copyright holder of something um, they also state that that a company can only hold a certain amount of information about people such as medical records for a certain amount of time or that the company can Cannot let the, must not let the data fall into the wrong hands, basically. Mm. Mm. Now, if this data protection act is breached, what can happen is that the company can get fined, or it can, in severe, in very, very, very severe and dire circumstances get fined so heavily that it gets put out of business. Or the person caught breaching the act could get fined or put into jail basically for breaching the act. And the company who's at whose data protection act got breached, they could they could sue the, they could sue them 
in a court of law. And, and also individuals have a right to see any data that, stored about them. Yes. And also have a right to insist that it be changed if there are mistakes e to be found in it. Yes. Yeah. They, yes, individuals can, can insist, basically, well, can ask to see any data held about them. Yeah. Okay, thanks, okay. thanks, Jamie. Thank you. Jamie Russell White, um, Technical Audience Presentation, or Presentation for a Technical Audience, Part 3. Okay, thank you, Jamie. Um, thank current, you. Sli current slide, data backups and secure sites, and the two points are backing up your data and data storage. Okay, so slide nine is, as Mr. Irvine has just said, data backup and secure site. Now, one thing I must talk about in this slide is backing up your data. Yeah. Now, back, now you may not think that you may not think you'll need to back up your data at all, but it could be the difference between if you were working, you keeping an entire folder of your work and possibly your job, and losing both because you've lost your work due to maybe. Maybe a fire in a building which is um, which has destroyed the whole building, or maybe just a hard disk failure, or even a hardware malfunction which has resulted in a hard disk failure. Well, I think it's even been known, Jamie, for uh, flooding to happen. You know, a burst pipe could yeah, uh, it be water pipe damage could as well. Going to your electrics. It would not only electrocute you, but it would also destroy the computer because the circuit board would be all wet. Yeah. And if you even try to operate the computer, bang, you would go into complete and utter oblivion. <laughs> well, um, I don't know if it's that dramatic, <laughs> but uh, certainly it would be dangerous. Yeah, certainly it would be dangerous. Um, okay. Now, backing up your data is actually a common practice for most computers, if, if not all of them. For most organisations. Yeah, for yeah. most organisations. Yeah. Um, so you would either use some software to back up your data, or there is a, or there should be a utility already in the computer that you can use to back up your data onto a secure flash drive if you have one. Or um, you could, or you can back it up onto a CD, a CD-ROM if you had one. Or um, what if it was a great deal of like data? That. If it was a great deal of data that was too big to be fitted onto either a flash drive or a CD-ROM, well, you would, well, well, you'd back it up to an external yeah, hard you'd back drive. Yeah, to an external hard drive, um, which could store all the data. Or that, even a tape drive. Yeah, yeah, or even a tape drive that would store all the data that's too big to go on either a flash drive or a CD-ROM, which you could then yeah. store in, let's say, a fireproof safe. Good, good, Jamie, yeah, that's a good point. And then you could store it in a secure site. going so Off-site, yeah. Off-site, yeah. yes, yeah. in a secure yeah. building. Yeah. Um, so that if your building did burn down, you would still have the data to hand. Yeah. And hopefully, if the fireproof safe didn't get destroyed, well, in the fire, well, well, it shouldn't do because it's fireproof, that's what it says on the tin, then you would still be able to retrieve your data. Thank you, Jamie, that's a good point. I think now, as well, there are possibility with high-speed broadband for companies to actually pay other companies to yeah. allow them to back up to the internet. Yeah. Onto that um, company's, that other third-party company's own servers. Yep, yeah. that is, yep, yeah, that, that, that is possible. Um, and I think companies have been known, actually, in the past to be doing something like that. Yeah. 
Awesome. Could be more and more popular yes, these it days. Could, it's, and it, it, it could be getting more and more popular. Okay, next slide, thank you. Conclusion, and your point say, this, the first point says, this presentation is intended for a technical audience. If the terminology in the presentation is called into question, I will address any concerns you may have and will attempt to remedy these as soon as possible to the best of my ability and stay safe. Yep. Um, so, um, <laughs> yeah, the, that, that's a good way to finish, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, so as the conclusion has said, um, I will now say it in, in I will now say it as if I was presenting it. This presentation has been intended for a technical audience. I do hope you've enjoyed it and that that, that you've enjoyed listening to it and, and and reading along with me in the refined version. Um, I do hope, once again, I do hope you've enjoyed it. If any of the technical terminology that I've used, or if any of, or if any facts, or tiny details, or anything in this presentation is called into question, I will do my best to address any concerns that you may have, and I will also do my best to remedy these to the best of my ability. And one more thing before I go. Stay safe online. Thank you very much, Jamie. Thank you very much. Thank you.